I think we're all ready now and we're all here. It was 1966. Gilbert Frank was stationed in Germany. He's never talked much about his time in the service. Testing one, two. With one exception. So we'd like to have a big welcome now for Don Lewis and the Legionnaires. He proudly managed a military band. So that's me in the middle there. I've never heard him. Um, I've only, you know, been told about him. Daughter Tanya knows on his last night in the service, her father made certain to record his beloved band. But it turns out these old reel-to-reel -reel tapes might as well be in a locked safe without a key. You could get an old reel-to-reel -reel player, but then you couldn't get it to play the right speed. And For decades, Tanya has searched for a way to get that music transferred so her dad could hear his band again. I took him to college thinking I could get it done in college, and I wasn't able to get it done. That was in North Dakota. Then the tapes traveled with her to Wisconsin. And I knew some people there. No luck. Tanya took the tapes to Idaho, where she thought she had a lead. And I think that's when we thought we lost them, because there was a house fire. But the tapes turned up again. Tanya's mom then took them with her to her home in Minnesota, then back to Washington, then back to Minnesota and Washington again. It was time for Tanya's last-ditch effort. Randy, I watch Creme News all the time. Take me right back to the track, Jack. Tanya knew Randy Shaw put together an honor flight CD. Maybe he knew someone who could help. He responded and said, I would love to help a vet. Randy sent the tapes to Carl Bingle at Mission Control Records, the producer of his honor flight CD. Carl had to dig out and dust off this old Norelco reel-to-reel -reel player to finally hear. Well, if I see and copy the tapes onto CDs. He's going to be so excited to hear them. So, ugh. I just can't believe they did it. Tanya's kept the CDs a secret until her parents came to visit from Minnesota. The big reveal just before noon at the Deer Park Farmers Market and Bakery. She's arranged for the CDs to play as bakery background music. Can we go sit over here and have some lunch? Have a seat, Dad. It takes but a few moments. What is that? Don Lewis. <laughs> the music memory connection snaps Gilbert Frank right back to his last night in Germany in 1969. We had a special request from Frank to do one. Of that night, the music was dedicated to him. I want to do a song now for Frank. He's kind of short, a little bit short. How many hours? 26 hours and 50, 55 minutes. This is kind of a short timer song. When I started hearing the songs, then I heard Don's voice. Right away, I knew. For the first time in 45 years, Gilbert is steeped in his greatest memories from the service. Yep, some of the best. Yep, that was when we had the good times. Those were the times stress would fade in favor of the music. Fantastic. And I knew when he heard it. <laughs> and it was sad. I mean, it was happy, but, you know, I'm just so happy for him. Gilbert thought he'd never hear the music he loved, and certainly not on this day. No idea whatsoever. She kept bragging about the soup was so good here. So. <laughs> Gilbert will find a safe place to put his new CDs of old music. That is, if he doesn't wear them out on his drive back home to Minnesota. Well, I'm going to be listening to it all the way home. <laughs> 1,333 miles. Well, that was really great. I really, really appreciate that. You're welcome, Dad. I love you. Happy birthday. Dan Jackson is usually up before the sun. I got out here at 5.30 this morning. His small Jackson farm in Spokane Valley requires a lot of muscle. Before and after his day job as a news photographer. But he'd rather cut back on sleep than cut back on his passion. I have this incredible desire to grow vegetables, so I follow it. Squeeze one more in there. Let's go. Today, he's harvesting the heirloom tomatoes he's been nursing from seed since April. These are gold medal heirloom tomatoes. He's also rounding up his deep coral hued winter squash and hand picking peppers in an array of colors. These are the sweetest peppers around. Everything has to be perfect. I reinspect them for flaws. Because even though Jackson Farms supplies some of the top restaurants in the inland northwest, 610 pounds of produce. This produce is headed to the most discerning palates. Elementary school students. Is this just pure roasted? Jackson Farm tomatoes and squash on the menu at Broadway Elementary. 
and all Central Valley Elementary School menus once a week through October. Who likes tomatoes? See these right here? Yeah. I grew those. Farmer Dan is visiting Broadway Elementary to introduce kids to the face behind the food. I grew those tomatoes in my farm three and a half miles from here. There you go. Have a sample. This is the first time Central Valley School District has sourced food from a local farmer. Nutrition Services Supervisor Denise Quaid acknowledges many kids don't readily reach for tomatoes and squash. There you go. But making it fun and meeting the farmer encourages them to branch out. We have new regulations that kids have to take fruits and vegetables, and I don't want kids to just have to take them. I want them to eat them. Hey, I bet somebody who doesn't like tomatoes would like these tomatoes. Well, I don't really like vegetables. I like fruits, but I'm going to be excited to try this farm fresh. Yeah, they're good. But this local food feature has bigger implications than it might appear. I've never really been able to connect with a school. In the past, it's been very challenging to find, find farmers who um, have enough um, product to support a school district the size of Central Valley School District. This represents a new literal link between local farmers and schools across the Inland Northwest. It's called Link Foods, which stands for Local Inland Northwest Cooperative. Rancher Beth Robinette is one of the founders. Link is a new cooperative of farmers working together to cut through all the red tape to get local food into local schools and universities. Yeah, isn't that great? Link has new warehouse space where they gather local food, then distribute. They also hold an insurance policy, which is often too expensive for small farmers. They wanted 14? Perfect. Then they make those critical connections with important customers like Central Valley and Spokane Schools. If they know that they want to feature a certain product one month, we'll go out to our network of farmers and say, hey, you know, Central Valley is looking for tomatoes and squash. Who can grow that? It's a new bridge that could return the Inland Northwest to a place where small farms thrive, making those long days more gratifying. I hope that uh, there will be more opportunity for people who are crazy enough like me to grow vegetables in this region. And they have a chance to sell more produce so that you know, they can do what they love.